Our speaker this morning, Circuit Judge Walter Kamansky, is certainly no stranger to UCF. Walt was the university's first student body president, and thus it is appropriate that he give the first commencement address in this new arena. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1971 and left UCF to pursue a law career. He has spent the past 26 years administering justice from a court bench in Orlando. Kamansky is a great example of what it means to reach for the stars. He has taken every opportunity to succeed and serve his community and his alma mater. At UCF, he has served on the President's Advisory Council and as an adjunct professor. He's also been recognized for his professional achievements and commitment to the university with the Distinguished Alumnus Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming a great friend to our university and a loyal alumnus, the Honorable Walter Kamansky. President Hitt, members of the faculty, members of the Board of Trustees, and distinguished guests, parents, and perhaps most importantly, uh, the students, or actually those who are graduating here today. It is my honor to be able to share with you the joy of your graduation, and that uh, I was in the first graduating class, I was in the first class. I usually do not discuss that in public because it dates me considerably. Before I get started, I need to give a couple, couple of caveats. The first of which is that uh, I've been requested that you're not allowed to play Zombie Nation more than four times during the ceremony. <laughs> and that uh, various members of the faculty was asking what my commencement speech would be about. And they really didn't care, they just wanted to make sure it was short. So I intend to adhere to that. That as Dr. Hitt indicated, I'm a graduate of UCF. And when I was applying to schools, I was accepted by a school north of here in Gainesville. <laughs> and UCF. In my mind, there was really no choice. I chose UCF. Like Robert Frost poem, you know, talking about two roads diverging in a wood, I took the one that was less traveled, and that has been all the difference. Here at this university, I had opportunities far beyond my expectations. I met a student here who ultimately became my wife. So when I graduated, I received not only a degree, but UCF issued me a wife. <laughs> we have two sons. The first one, Ryan, graduated from college two years ago from UCF. My second son, Christopher will graduate from the College of Medicine at UCF this May. I would not entrust my children to just any college or university, but I would entrust them to UCF, and I'm so proud of them, their accomplishments, I'm proud of the university. And so I begin my my little speech here today that I have a present for each of you at the end that is very popular now is GPS devices and at the end uh, each of you will have a, a new GPS device and I'll discuss how you can obtain that at the end. That in a commencement speech it's often that you hear uh, some platitudes about new horizons and you're the best class ever to go through here etc etc etc. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about things that I, I think that uh, are important to you and things that I know about. And most of the things I know about because of experience. And experience is essentially doing wrong things. And if you do enough wrong things, you figure out the right things to do. So 
I'll tell you about the wrong things and perhaps save you some anguish as you do your right things. That I have a number of interns that come and work with me, uh, law students and undergraduates, lawyers, uh, young professionals, and often I'm asked the very simple question is, is what, what should I do with my life? Uh, what should I do with my career? And actually, uh, after spending a long time asking myself the same questions, uh, the answer is very, very simple. Do something you love. Do something you have a passion for. If you find something that you love, you will do well at it. You will receive satisfaction and you will soar. Sometimes we're forced into square holes and we might be a round peg. So maybe you need to move on till you find that rat round hole where you fit. Uh, I had a young student who was getting ready to graduate and she was carrying a 4.0 from here. And uh, she was pre-law and uh, getting ready to take the LSAT test. She was very quiet in class, very, very rarely ever talked. In my class, you're supposed to interact. So I spent some time with her talking about her future. And she told me she had to go to law school. And that's a little bit different approach. No one has to go to law school. But that was her parents' expectations of her. That's not what she wanted to do. And having seen a number of lawyers practicing after a few years that are burned out and unhappy because they did something that they really didn't want to do in the first place, uh, we had kind of an interesting talk about that. And ultimately, uh, I didn't give her any direction one way or other. I gave her my just find what you love passion speech. And she ended up, she works here in administration. She loved college administration, had worked through it as an undergraduate, and now professionally is completing her second degree. So find what you have passion and do it. The, um, there was a book, actually a series of books by Gail Shee that talked about passages and different types of passages, but basically the two types that she talked about is the passages you go through life, ages. You know, the person you are at age 16, you're different when you're 26, and you're different when you're 36, you're different when you're 46. Same thing with, with careers. When you're starting out the beginning of a career, you're a different person when you're 10 years into it or 20 years into it. Same thing with, with a single person getting married, family obligations, having parental obligations, having your grandparents or your parents' obligations, divorce, restructuring of families. All of these are passages. Well, you are here going through one of those passages. You are not the same person you were four years ago if you're the undergraduate. And if you're in the graduate division, you're certainly not the same person you were prior to even st starting your college experience and undergraduate. You are a different person. Part of it is maturity, part is your education. So you are experiencing one of those passages, and this is a nice day to be able to see you moving on through one of those passages. The other, that's kind of a generic, you know, do, do your passion, find it, you know, it's like, curly and, and find the one thing. But the second thing I need to really talk about is something that a number of us have experienced both on this platform as well as out in the audience. And that's a question of prioritization of things that are important in your life. And there's a very easy way to prioritize things in your life. My, my way that I prioritize things is 10 years ago when I was coaching Little League I had a kid that was not hitting the ball very well, and I finally got him to hit the ball really well, strong enough that he came back at me and broke my index finger in two places. I had to compliment him because he did it right. I couldn't swear because it was Little League. So, so I went home and my wife said, you had to go to the hospital and get it fixed. I said, no, they're just gonna tape it. She had to go to the hospital, it's fixed. No, it's a pain in the neck, it'll take a long time. She said, if I call and there's nobody there, will you go? She called, and she said, there's nobody there, you can go. Well, I went down there and she lied. It, it was packed. <laughs> Wise are like that. But I was already there. They had my name. So I had my little broken finger. So you go to the back of the line. You know, people coming in there with legs off, arms off, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can go to the front of the line. 
And then uh, somebody came by and took my blood pressure. And all of a sudden, uh, I went to the front of the line. And I had uh, a great number of men's fantasies come true. If, not to offend this, the ladies and the men from the School of Fantasy, but I had a group of nurses grab every article of clothing and strip it off me in five milliseconds. <laughs> that was the good part. The bad part was that they're sticking plugs and things all over my body and attaching wires and electrodes. And it seems to me I was have, at that time I was having some sort of heart failure. Well, they came in with the doctors and the nurses and they had all the, everything hooked up. And then I proceeded to watch the equipment, uh, monitoring my heart go from 72 beats to 62 beats to 42 beats to 32 beats to, to black. And I remember seeing them with the, the jump start equipment out there, you know, getting ready to use it. And I, I woke up several hours later in the critical care unit and I looked around and everybody else around me is out of it. You know, they're just gone. And they look really bad. They look like death warmed over and most are not going to make it. And I'm, I'm looking around and I said, they're bad. And then I realized, I'm here with them. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, over the next week, I had a chance to think about priorities. And so when I got out of there, I canceled a lot of meaningless appointments where you waste time. I cut back committee assignments that really didn't accomplish a lot. I put emphasis in the things I love to do, put a lot of effort in that, put effort into my family, my loved ones, and spirituality. And every time I start drifting away from that, I remind myself. And it's something that you can remind yourself, anybody that's not had that experience, imagine if you were going to pass away by tomorrow, what would you do today? If you keep imagining that, because at some time that thought's actually going to be reality, that our lives are occupied with cell phones, iPods, Blackberries, text messaging, emailing. You get to that compulsive, if you haven't checked your email on your Blackberry in the last five minutes, you feel like you're losing it. Those of you who chronically text message all day long, you know, you got to get a life. <laughs> Live every day as if it were your last day. Prioritize those things that are important to you. Follow your, your passions. Don't be afraid to fail. If you're too timid and worried about failure, you're never going to accomplish anything. So reach out. Life is full of failures. Life is full of failures. Life isn't fair. Get over it. If life were fair, I would be taller and better looking like Dr. Hitt. It's not fair. So do not be afraid to fail. And when failure happens, it's okay to move on. I handle over 3,000 dissolutions, divorces a year. And 80% of the time, we're helping people move on through their lives. And I hate to characterize it as failure, it's just one of those passages in life, helping people reorganize, restructure, and move on. So about 80% of the time, we're helping people move on with their lives. About 15% are in real problems, real stress, and the last 5% are just crazy. They have lost it. <laughs> Don't let other people drain your time. Don't let technology drain your time. It's too precious. So, now I get to the point about the GPS. I saw everybody perked up and most people paid attention to the whole speech. <laughs> GPS is a way that you find directions, it's a compass. And each of you has a moral compass. And so you just need to remind yourself of your moral compass, your own internal GPS. You need to set your goals, you need to follow that, you need to program it in. You need to achieve those goals and then reset them and move on from them. 
So with that, I give to you your own GPS. Congratulations to you all. Well, that GPS comes uh, without the need for batteries and with a lifetime warranty. Not bad. Walt, we thank you for our wonderful commencement address, and I'd ask all of you in the audience to join me in giving Walt, Walt another warm round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>